Welcome to the solution to homework set number 11 for ECE 376. This homework set looks at digital filters, taking a filter in the S plane and implementing it in software. The first problem just looks at what does the filter at the S plane look like. So if I have a filter in the S plane, what that means is a differential equation. So cross multiply and then convert. S squared y means the second derivative of y. S y means the first derivative, and y is just y. S x is the derivative of x, so that's the differential equation relating x and y, either using the dy dt notation or prime notation. Prime notation is oftentimes used, it's a lot easier to write, so y prime means the first derivative, y double prime means the second derivative. Either, either one's fine. Part b, tries to find the output when I have the input as 2 plus 4 sine of 5t. This uses the factor, or the property of linearity. Linearity says if I have f of a plus b, that's f of a plus f of b. So if I have two inputs, treat that like two separate problems. This one's at dc, that one's at ac. So the first part, for dc analysis, the input is 2, s equals 0. Can have everything is e to the st, e to the 0t is 1, a constant. Here's the gain at s equals 0, times the input at that frequency gives you the total output, or the output at dc. Repeat for the ac input. The input is 4 sine of 5t. In phasor form, that's 0 minus j4, 0 cosine 4 sine. The frequency is 5 radians per second. This is the gain everywhere. All I care about is what's the gain at 5 radians per second times the input at 5 radians per second gives you a complex number. What that means is the real part's cosine minus j is sine. The total answer then is dc plus ac. Problem two. Suppose instead I had a digital filter. I know it's digital because I have z's rather than s's. That corresponds to a difference equation. Again, S was a differential equation, Z is a difference equation. Same procedure, multiply it out. Z squared Y means Y, two samples in the future. Z Y means Y, one sample in the future, and Y is just Y. Z X is X, one sample in the future, and X is just X. So that's the difference equation corresponding to that transfer function. If you do a change in variable, I can shift all the k's by 2. Uh, this is also valid. So either answer is correct. If I want to find out what's the output, I want to have a constant and a sine wave. Same thing we did in the s-plane. Treat that as two problems. I have dc and ac. At dc, x equals 2. s is 0. Conversion from the s-plane to the z-plane is e to the st. So if s equals 0, z is 1. Here's the gain of dc, times the input of dc is the output of dc, 25. Repeat at 5 radians per second. Here's the input at 5 radians per second, 0 cosine, 4 sine. My frequency is 5. z is e to the st. That's either 1 at 0.05 radians per second, again t is 0.01, or 1 at 2.8 degrees. Evaluate at that complex number times the input at that frequency gives me a complex number. What that means is the real part's cosine minus j is sine. The total answer then is dc plus ac. So z plane's just like the s plane. The only trick is I have to go from s equals j omega, add one step, z is e to the st. Problem three, come up with a filter in the z-plane that has the same frequency response, basically the same filter, in the z-plane. The approach I like using is using the mapping, using z as e to the st. Uh, I like that because it's more gives me more intuition. I can see how the poles map. So pole at minus 2 becomes 0 0.9802, minus 4 becomes 0 0.9608, minus 10 becomes 0 0.9048. I've got three poles in the s-plane, I've got three poles in the z-plane. And you can kind of see the one-to-one -one mapping. 
2 goes to 0.98, 4 goes to 0.96, 10 goes to 0.9. What the poles do is they give you the shape of the gain versus frequency. It looks kind of like this. To match the actual gain versus frequency is pick a point, typically DC. If I match the gain at DC and I have the same shape, I've got the same filter. The gain at DC should be 0.125. So pick K so that the digital filter also has a gain of 0.125. And what you wind up with is a really small number. It's you know whatever it is. So there's my filter. To check, I could see if this is the same filter, I've got the same gain versus frequency. So what I'll do is, here's my sampling rate. Let's plot the gain versus frequency between 0 and 30 ratings per second. S is j omega, z is e to the st. Here's g of s. To get g of z, here's how the poles map. The first one maps is e to the st, pull it minus 4, pull it minus 10. g of z, I don't know the numerator yet, so let's just guess 1. There's my denominator. Uh, the maximum gain of g of s is 1.12. Maximum gain of g of z is wrong, so k is the ratio of the two. There's my k. So once I know k, I can find g of z, and let's plot frequency versus gain of g of s in blue, frequency versus g of z in red, and here's what you get. The blue line and red line are so close to each other, you really can't tell the difference. A uh, few spots you can see a blue is peeking out. Basically, it's the same gain versus frequency. It's the same filter. And from a practical standpoint, I don't care how you implement it. Is it in the S-plane, meaning op-amp circuit, or a Z-plane, meaning software? I don't really care. It's got the same gain versus frequency. Problem four. Suppose instead you had complex poles. In electronics two, that means a different circuit. In this class, it really doesn't mean a whole lot. It just means change one line of code. Uh, to figure out what the filter is, I'm going to have to map from the S-plane to the Z-plane. I've got a 0 at S equals 0. That means I should have a 0 at Z is plus 1. I've got poles at minus 1, plus minus J16. In the Z-plane, I've got poles at 0.9774, plus or minus J.1577. Z-plane, you need a lot of decimal places. Uh, these are really sensitive to rounding. So this is my filter. To find k, make the maximum gain of g of s, that's an s, the same as, oh, that's a z, never mind. Maximum gain of g of s, the same as g of z, and it gives you a gain of 0 0.0099. In a MATLAB, I can do that. Here's my sampling rate. There's my pole at s equals 0. There's a 0 at that point. The first pole is e to the st. Second pole is at e to the st, complex conjugate. Omega s, z is e to the st. Here's g of s. Here's g of z. I'm not sure what that s is doing in there. And then k is whatever... Okay, I got a six in there for some reason. K is whatever it takes to make the two uh, maximum gains match up. So this is my gain K. I don't really know why that 6 snuck in there, but it is. As long as I'm consistent, it's fine. So this actually, K is actually that times 6. Plot the two together, as long as you include that 6. The blue line is G of S. The red line is G, is G of Z. They've got the same gain versus frequency. It's the same filter. In this case, I can't match the gain of DC because the DC gain is 0. So I get 0 equals 0, solve for k. Um, in this case, I, instead I said pick k to make the maximum gain the same. Problem 5. Write a C program to implement that filter. And it looks like I forgot the 6. To do that, I'll multiply this out cross multiply and here times six. And I forgot that six for some odd reason. The denominator polynomial is your factor times s for y. So like if I have y 
is that times x. Cross multiply, that's times y. Bring, the, bring these terms right, gives you a sign change. So minus 1.95 becomes plus 1.95. Plus 0.98 becomes minus 0.98. Each one's a decreasing power of z, so each one's an increasing delay. So this is the current output, one power of z less. I'll put one sample in the past, two samples in the past. This is one power less than z, so this is x, one sample in the past, two samples in the past. So the numer numerator polynomial is times x. Denominator polynomial is times y. With a sign flip, because you cross multiply, bring right. That's your program. And pretty much, that's the only thing you need to do. You need to do a little bit of overhead. I've got to remember the current input and the input one sample ago, two samples ago. I need to calculate the current output and remember the output one sample ago, two samples ago, and set the sampling rate. But otherwise, the same code works for pretty much any filter. Just change one line of code. So that's homework set number 11 for EC111. One last comment. In signals and systems, you cover Z transforms, and that kind of scares students, uh, gives you kind of bad memories. Z transforms really aren't that bad. If you just convert as Z is e to the ST, it's pretty easy going from the S plane to the Z plane, and I can actually go the other way around from Z plane to the S plane. What's nice about the Z plane is I can implement this filter in software very directly. That's the beauty of it. For intuition, I personally don't have a lot of intuition for the z-plane, so what I do is I convert everything to the s-plane, look at how the filter behaves in the s-plane, but the way I implement it typically is in the z-plane, because usually I'll implement it with a microprocessor. That's what this is all about. So that's homework set number 11 for ECE 376.